Welcome to the Bro Night Podcast, your weekly podcast where we game live and shoot through topics about entertainment news of the day, where disagreement is allowed, opinions are cool, and truth is encouraged. Let's have fun. Here is your host. Welcome to episode three of the Bro Night Podcast. What's up, Guardians? This is your host, Two Bears here. Rocking it live from the tower. I am joined by my real life brother and co host of the Bro Night podcast, Chase Nightcrawler. What's up, Bubba? Oh, not much, man. Just uh, ready to get into the good topics tonight. Um, we've been playing a hell of a lot of Destiny, maybe uh, too much because I've been kind of in limbo, which I will talk about that later. Um, other than that, I know a lot of people are having good fun with it, and I am too. It was a very good improvement, but we'll get into that when it's time. And uh, good to be joined by my brother, uh, Les King, and uh, my brother, Anouf Newcomb, and and, uh, and the usual brothers as well. And I'm ready to get into the bro now. Yes, and we have Christian here. What's up, man? I am the knight. I'm ready for episode three. <laughs> he is the knight. He's ready. And we have two special guests, as Chase alluded to. And we have, we are joined by our OG, way back boy from Philly, uh, the one and only from John Philly. F. Rambo, Mr. Les King. Les, how are you feeling tonight, bro? Feeling pretty good. Um, looking forward to the conversations we're going to have. Yeah. Playing awesome, Overwatch. Buddy. Nice, playing Overwatch. Getting, uh, Getting a uh, loss. Uh, <laughs> no team participation here. Hey, that's how it goes sometimes, bro. And our good friend from a bit further up the East Coast, who you may have heard on the console corner, from the Great White North, Noof Nukem. What's up, Noof? Hey, guys. I may not be related by blood, but I feel that we are brothers of the same ilk, and I am honored to be sure. a part of the Bro Night Podcast, episode number three. Thanks for having me here. I know we've got a lot of topics to get into, so I won't uh, hold you guys up with the intro. Let's get into it, and let's play some Destiny and rock shit yeah, live. Baby. I love Maybe it. Let's strike life here in I a second. It. Yes, and okay, so we got some awesome I, topics I tonight to talk to about. We are going to uh, discuss the success of PUBG, the outstanding success. Uh, we're going to aim down our sights and talk about Black Ops 3 for a quick discussion. And we're going to try to not become scruffy nerf herders on Tatooine as we cruise through Star Wars Battlefront 2 talk. And then... Can't wait for the freaking are, game. Me neither. Then we're going to get our magnifying glasses out. And talk about LA. Look at Noose Penis. <laughs> or that too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> then, uh, uh. Yes. I was not expecting that one. That was awesome. <laughs> and, Just kidding. Well, I'm going to warn kidding. you fuckers right now. If you're going to stare that long, you're going to need lazy by the week's end. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I was wondering about the, when the lazy eye was going to kick in. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and yes. then we're going to mention some awesome words that uh, an AC Origins director had to say about the 1X, Ooh. which we all love to talk about. Yeah, and um, then our main event of the evening will be Destiny 2. So Shitting I hope on your bodies are ready out there. And our awesome guest may have additional topics, so it's going to be a great cast. Okay, I have already introduced our guests to you, but now let's get to know them a bit better for you listeners. So, Noof, if you don't mind, my brother, could you give us a brief history of how you got into games and then podcast? What brings you here tonight? All right, well, I'll start off with my gamer tag, Noof Noof, because I often get questions about that. I am from Newfoundland, Canada. And uh, I now reside in Alberta, Canada. I've been playing video games um, since I was knee-high to a grasshopper. Started out pretty much with the 20, Atari 2600. Kind of gravitate over to the Sega Master System, then the NES, and uh, 
Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, um, that sort of thing. I guess I was more always a Sega kid, but I've always been oh, a big fan too. of video games. I really don't care what platform a game is on. Uh, while I have my preferences, like I think a great game is a great game no matter you know where it is and what it is you want to play on. It's just enjoy your time mm -hmm. with games, make friends, um, you know, and that sort of thing. So yeah, it's been a long time. Uh, love my Xbox One. Can't wait to get the X. And um, yeah, I have the PlayStation 4 and the Switch. And uh, enjoying that's gaming, awesome, man. Bro. It's a good time to be a gamer. It's great stuff. And yeah, that's kind of it in a nutshell, I suppose. Hey, that's awesome, buddy. And I definitely share that philosophy. If it's a good game, just enjoy it and let other people enjoy it. I like that. And I'm glad that we met you on Xbox. It's been really fun, man. Um, now I have a kind of a more personal question just because you're a Canadian and we love Canadians. Um, is it true that they force boys to play hockey as children in Canada? Uh, uh, <laughs> I think there's some semblance of truth there, to be honest with you. I mean, uh, there are some parents, unfortunately, and I guess this goes for any sport, whether it's in yeah. the U.S. with baseball and football here, that I think sometimes parents, uh, it's not only do they want the kids to play sports, but sometimes I think that ultimately they're trying to get their kids to live out the dreams that they failed to live up to, you know, because a lot of us always dream to become a pro football yeah. player or a pro hockey player, oh, and sometimes me. it doesn't work out. So then you have a kid, mm -hmm. and it's kind of like, well, I have a chance to do the rights, you know, by my child. But again, I just think a child should, um, yeah, I think a child should basically have choice to play what they want to do. And yeah. if you see there's a natural interest there, let them go to it. And if they're if they're kind of resilient, if they're being forced, then they're not loving the sport. And if you don't love a sport, yeah. I'm sorry, you'll never really succeed at any sport it. if you don't love it. Yes. No, absolutely. But yeah. in Canada, I mean, hockey <laughs> is. I mean, Lots. Canadians like we don't like we like all the sports up here too. Like yeah. we're, we're very familiar with baseball and basketball and football. Um, you know, like it's well versed. But I mean, hockey is. Mm -hmm. it, it, I mean, it was invented in Canada. It's a That's sport awesome, that bro. we excel at. We're one of the best countries in the world, if not mm -hmm. the best. I mean, our records speak for themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, we produce the highest amount of hockey players in the National Hockey League for, than any nation in the world. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of ingrained in our fabric. It, it kind of identifies yeah. who Canadians are. It's not just a sport here. It's almost a religion, and uh, and it's a lot of fun. And I play it, too, and it's such a great, yeah. fast-paced sport that uh, I recommend uh, anybody trying if you can afford it. It's a bit of an expensive sport, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, I gosh, fell gosh. off, by the yeah. way. <laughs> I'll be back. Okay, yeah, I was wondering. Guy. Here you go, Nip. I got you, Bubba. Oh, uh, and and you said that you played floor hockey, and now we were, my fiance and I were kind of looking up. And apparently, there's several types. Now, do you play with just shoes on like a court, or do you play with skates or what? Well, floor hockey, we play in a gymnasium, basically where the okay. basketball court is. And cool. you're wearing regular sneakers. Some people may wear like a pair of hockey gloves to protect their hands versus slashes and stuff. Yeah. But generally, the players, they don't have anything on outside of that. Now, I'm a goaltender. So basically, oh, when cool. I play ball hockey, we play with this hard um, this hard plastic ball. It's almost like a mix between a rubber and a plastic. Yeah, that's ridiculous. And, um, <laughs> and they definitely leave, they leave fucking welts on your body if, uh, if wow. you're not... Uh, yeah, when you get when somebody slaps the ball, and some of those guys can't really slap that ball at me. Put pretty some fast. heat on it. But, yeah, yeah. I, so I that, just wear a so my wife and helmet. And have something in common. Uh. Yeah, I just. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That's awesome. Sorry, honey. Uh, nice getting later. spanked with a hard ball. <laughs> well, that oh person. man. That okay, well, mercy. thanks for uh, filling us in on that, man. I was curious about that, bro. Um, yeah, ball hockey, floor hockey, it's the same thing. It's just when we say floor hockey, it usually means that we're inside of a gymnasium. Uh, where typically we'd call it street hockey when you go outside and you play on the street yeah. and you got to let the cars pass by and all. It's kind of it's all the same thing. Okay, cool. Thanks, Simon. The rules uh, are a little different, though, mind you. They're not they're not rigid yeah. like hockey, you know. Are they like yeah, street it's like rules? street ball anywhere? Well, basically, almost. like you yeah, drop a face off and you just you run around. There's like none of the like penalties and rules and you're not gonna have and just, and all like, that shit. There No, you kinda, just go to one side yeah. and score. Go to the other side, score. That's that sounds that's it. that sounds fun in a yeah. very exhilarating way. Fun. Now I know kinda like basketball, you take out all the rules, you know. 
Yeah. And oh, plus yeah, the man. best thing like about floor hockey and ball, ball hockey is that you, you can be good at it because you don't have to learn the skating aspect of the game. So yeah. it's very easy to pick up and play. That's what I need. Skating is play that really out there. Yeah, skating is the part that alienates a lot of people from the actual game of ice hockey because it's hard, right? Yeah. I have a size 17 you... shoe. Every time I try oh to go ice skating, I can't, bro. <laughs> oh my jeez. <laughs> wow. Well, That's I the tell reason you what, I can't. If you come to Canada, I'll put some blades on some snowshoes for you. We'll try that out. <laughs> hey, that's. That's what's going to take, bro. That's what's going to take. just rip the rails off of a snowmobile. No, I tried to get in the... Like, I wanted to go skating with my wife a couple years ago so bad. Uh. And so I, I slipped into some size 13s. And my feet were curled <laughs> up so much that it felt like Chinese torture. Okay, no offense to anybody's Chinese. But it, that's what it felt like, okay? And so I'm skating. Well, I literally, I mean, you don't realize when your feet are flat, you have no traction. You have no side to side. So yeah. in skating, it's all about your movement side to side, uh -huh. how much speed you can gather. And, and the friction, man, yeah. I tell you what, dude, I just like, I, dude, I was like, literally, I would get, I would like use my weight to get speed and I would kind of bend down to go forward and I would just like stop and I would be like, okay, like, holy shit, I just skated to the other end of the court and now I've got to, or the, the, the rink and, uh. And uh, now I've got to go all the way back. So, yeah, I, I think I would struggle with uh, ice hockey unless I could get some decent skates. There ain't no doubt about yeah. that. Okay. Yeah, Noof can, like, forge you some skates out of, like, metal <laughs> around your feet. I'll just, guys. You, I'll just, I'll just modify a couple of kayaks up Oops. here and you can stick your feet in those. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yo. Do I remember Qui-Gon Jinn when he was fighting Darth Maul and they got stuck behind the barriers? Oh, no. He was like this. Yeah. He was like just chilling. Oh, like Chase, that. you totally just made it. I'm coming back. Hey, we're going to get into Star Wars later, so that was an awesome reference. Yeah, actually. baby. Yes. Okay. Yeah, hey, shout out to Spider-Man watching my stream over here. Spider-Man, thanks for uh, tuning up, in. Spider? Us on doing this as part of the Bro Night podcast here, so uh, with a couple of great guys. Uh, yeah, you will so be acknowledged of the uh, man, sir. Yeah. Spider-Man's been that's watching Spider a lot of my streams, big supporters. So. Awesome, yeah. dude. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, man. Awesome, Thanks bro. for joining, buddy. Okay, well, let's get to our other special guest. Now, Les is an OG Xbox friend of Chase o and I. to the G. Definitely. And uh, we met you way Ooh. back in Halo 2, so RIP. RIP. But uh, for everyone else, Les, <laughs> what got you into games? And how did you change demolition for the Call of Duty franchise? Uh, well, first of all, I started playing games around Sega Genesis. Uh, played a lot of like, you, Sonic the Hedgehog. And yes. Then Street Fighter 2. And then my cousin, uh, my cousin B that I grew up with, his dad had a lot of Genesis games many titles I don't remember but we played a bunch of those until PlayStation nice. came out did y'all have the Power Rangers game what's the real question uh yes they had yes. Every Dude, that game was game. so good <laughs> Rock Star baby bringing it back they had every PlayStation game so I would just go over there nice I had like six titles to myself they had like a hundred so I just wow. visit their house play everything so that was the place and, to uh, be so you played yeah the and then game. I got my hands on Xbox and a magical game called Halo yeah. And I never looked back. Oh. Me neither, bro. Like, I tried... I, my friend, he was like, you gotta play this game. But I need a game to uh, trade you. I can't just give it to you. So he gives me, uh, gives me Halo 1. And I give him a brand new, unopened copy of Hitman 2. I never got Hitman 2 back. I didn't want it. I was, I was like, about to say, I, you got I'm the better never giving the deal. this game back just saying. to you. <laughs> like, Hitman ain't a bad game, but you got the better deal. Yeah, awesome, I was bro. like, I'm never giving this game back. Like, I don't care what you do with Hitman. I'm never giving this back. <laughs> and I don't blame you. Eventually, I met buddy. you guys. Yeah, we met Les on Halo 2. Oh, yeah, man. man. I think, actually. We were like, we met in Social Slayer. Yeah, on, I uh, think. I remember it was on Burial Mounds, man. Mm -hmm. And we absolutely just shit on people together. Yeah. And we started talking. And uh, play we actually like, just played together cool. without talking. Then we started talking a little bit after that once we all got mics and 
Dude, it was just magic. It was just like, it man, was, man, like we just like it's not just that we're good. It's like we just enjoy gaming together, man. Yeah. Yep. Like, dude, Social Slayer back in the day was like, that's that was one of those games. Like, that was so. You fun. know, you have all these games nowadays where you have to earn yeah. everything or you have to earn something for playing it. Like, that's how I even feel now. Like, I feel like I'm involved yeah. with that. It's like, man, why haven't I got this new gun? Why haven't I got this, this, and that, and this, and that? But big back in the day, it was just because, wow, a game this was is fun. a fun-ass game. Mm-hmm. I just want to keep playing with my friends all night. And that yeah. is why it was fun, man. It's yeah. There's some games that are, like, this game has a lot it's of kinda that. It's kind of capturing like. that, yeah. But at the same time, there's still some of that with gear and stuff that I, I feel like I'm kind of plateauing until I do the, uh, yeah. the raid and the nightfalls and that kind of thing. But, dude... I'll tell you what, man, that's one thing I miss is just being able to be like, hey, I just met some of my lifelong friends on uh, mm-hmm. Social Slayer, and we're rocking this shit out, man. I mean, that yeah. was a beautiful, point. simpler time on on that aspect for sure, buddy. Yeah, and I used to be that. I used to come over and watch them play when I was a little, wee little kid. Uh, yeah, you're a little far. <laughs> And this but, is why I think uh, Noof's recommendation of let's play some custom game one night for this would be awesome. I yeah, like sure. that idea. I definitely hook my Xbox up for that. That would be legit, bro. Gotta, gotta, I gotta bring my agent back out. Uh oh. Yeah, Les's agent <laughs> of infamy is the shotgun, and you don't want him to get it. I promise you that. And. Uh, and uh, yeah, and, and then we, we changed, once we got to Modern Warfare 2 and then 3, we pretty much away. just broke the game and no changed the demolition the for the spread all the way through, yes. You're fine. Sure okay. Basic, no, I died. Basically, uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. I wasn't good at uh, the first call, COD 4, but Modern Warfare 2, that was my Call of Duty. I love mm-hmm. getting nukes. And... I will get them almost every game in demo like how long you got? down to a science. 13. And I, that's why I think we uh, we changed the game because even Modern in Warfare 3 we wasn't did that. the same. I hated that game, but we would just mm-hmm. like set up, we would just set up and head glitch in so many different places. It'd be like, oh, you got your nuke. Oh, Les got his nuke. Oh, Blake got his nuke. It'd just be like ridiculous. There were lines to call in nukes. That's how good yeah. it was. Yeah. yeah, we were a little ridiculous at, the, at those games. So. That's why I do want an MW2 remastered. I mean, seriously, because yeah. that's the Call of Duty I love, man. Personally. Yeah, Nick, yeah. I would love I remember, to get to play one of those with us, bro. That'd be so cool. I remember playing, was I think it was Modern Warfare 2 one time, and uh, I jumped into this random game, and it was one of those where the team had basically left. There was probably two or three guys left playing, and now I know why they left. As soon as I jumped in, I got killed repeatedly by nuke drops, and it was absolutely brutal. <laughs> it was probably I was just like, was I probably jump in, is. and I'm just like, boom, <laughs> nuke, boom, nuke, boom. I think it's like, wow. I don't know how many times I was like, this is, this is bullshit, I remember Like, what's saying, going oh, on right here? Yeah, what is this? I can't even that is what nuke did it. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Call of Duty... I liked I liked uh, COD two a lot. I liked oh, yeah. uh, Modern Warfare the first one and Modern Warfare yeah. two. After that, I started to lose interest in the series. Yeah. MW three I didn't like myself. I, I just MW two. I thought was the map design amazing. was shit. Personally. Yeah. Okay. Well, I got one question for Les now from being a Philly native. Okay, Les. Hats, Genos, or other. Uh, other. Other, okay. You probably know a good local spot. Now, I'm asking... Now, I was reading a BuzzFeed quiz about uh, questions people from Philly get asked, and that was one of them. And they said, locals know better spots. So, what is your favorite spot to go and get an amazing Philly? Uh, right now, there's a spot near me. Um, it's called Italian Kitchen. It's pretty good. Mm. But I mm. also love their I want it uh, already. Texas Chicken <laughs> Grinder. <laughs> It will not let you down. I got you, Blake. That sounds righteous, bro. Yeah, basically it's like shredded chicken, bacon, and barbecue sauce. Ooh. And cheese. And, Ooh. like, mm. the amount of meat you get Damn. on there is definitely going to fool you <laughs> up, dude. <laughs> That's like, what I'm saying. You're, you're going to be filled. Oh, God. I'm filled up just thinking about it. I actually had one tonight. <laughs> I'm not oh, oh, nice. Dude. Cool, bro. Oh, I want to feel it. Dude, I love shitty, like, cheap rip-off oh. Philly cheesesteaks, so... When I get oh, a real man. Philly cheesesteak, I will actually probably cry real man tears. Like, there's no doubt in my too. mind. 
too. Man. It's gonna happen. This is how I knew they were good. As a kid, my mom would go visit my cousin in New York, and she, my cousin would like pay her like fifty dollars <laughs> to like wow. bring her as many as possible. Dang, dang. And that's she's, legit. My mom would be like, they're going to be cold by the time I get there. She's like, I got a microwave. Like, <laughs> good was every awesome. time. That's awesome. Wow, that guy went down fast. Ooh. Yeah, he did. Yeah. We're that was, here's the boss, I guarantee you. Uh-oh. Right here. This looks okay, epic, well, yo. I like this. Dude, this track has been badass. It has. Nope. We're getting some good footage for a bro not podcast here. Okay, Les, uh, is there anything that you want to say about, like, your art or any kind of projects you're working on or maybe just at a future date or anything? Um, yeah, I'm trying to – well, before I – I don't know. Art used to be, like, more personal for me. Like, I, I would draw mm-hmm. stuff, but I never would share it. But, like, I'm getting to the point where I want to share it. We're going to so jump in right the hole. Right now, I'm trying to master okay. the gateway, though. or get better at, like, coloring and shading because I was just more of a, like, a sketcher. So I would just sketch pictures out and leave it at that. But now mm-hmm. I'm getting used to, like, Photoshop and how to color in it and take advantage of, like, the digital tools they offer. So, so I'm interested in showing people you. what I got. That's awesome, buddy. Do. Dude, he's legit. I will say this. Yeah, this, Les. Like, like, Les will show me something, or I will see something on his Facebook or what, whatnot, and it will literally just be like, oh, man, it's just a little thing I was working on. I'm like, dude, that looks like a fucking, like, Funimation guy just went and did it or uh-huh. or something. And that's not even the 3D animation or whatever I know. I know he went to school a lot to do art, but, like, it, he, he, he knows his stuff, man. He, he's fun to watch, man. I, yeah. Like, that's one thing. I, I've always admired his work. But even more, like, Les and I have talked about his stories and some of his concepts he's made in art. And that's that's one thing I really like a lot. I got you, new. But, yeah, man, he's, he's legit. I'll, I'll, sh- I'll, I'll, I'll give him a shout-out because, I mean, I, his stories are compelling. Like, like I, he just, I just think he just needs somebody, like, a platform and, you know, just somebody to, to kind of, like, mm-hmm. give it a look because it's, it's some good stuff, man. Yeah, That's and if any of y'all, sure. yeah, if any of y'all are interested in art as a form of you know expression, or you want to do it as a career, like be really? sure to check if we ever have a podcast. And I, we might. I've got stream. a. I got a diploma in visual art, man. Oh wow, bro. sweet! Yeah. That's awesome. Used to paint, man. Well, draw, I didn't know photography, that. all that stuff. Yeah, you bet. Cool. Specialized. I don't think we're supposed work. to be in this square. Hey, what you we gotta, gotta do, do guys, is be we gotta be one in each circle or whatever. Oh, okay, okay. I'm coming back. Uh, you can't you can't be we in, can't get blo- in the circle. We can't get blo- the shield blo- won't get, come down hey, until you're in there. there yeah, you Nate, just get in that other one. Get, or or I'll do it. Y'all y'all are, I'm a higher level than y'all. I'll get, okay. I'll get in it. It makes more sense. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well that's awesome. I was just gonna say less that we can co stream with him doing some art sometimes if somebody wants to, you know, see how it's done or ask him some questions, and that would be super cool. So just let us know if any of y'all are into that. Okay, now, let's get into our topics for tonight, gentlemen. Okay, now, first up, we're going to talk about some PUBG, and I'm going to let Les talk about this a lot because he's actually played it. And I've seen some cool stuff, and it looks super exciting to me. But uh, just real quick, it's often top five on Twitch streams. Uh, it's number two spot on Steam. I'm sure it's probably even been more than oh, that. Circles. Uh, there is an estimated 6.5 million players who have purchased the $30 game from Steam. And uh, it seems like it has a lot of cool moments and experiences that can happen for uh, streaming and whatnot. So, Les, do you want to tell us about that and how it's going? Well, sure. I had an interesting moment earlier. I was uh, chilling, talking to Chase earlier, and I decided to play a match, a solo match. And for some reason, my game didn't launch, so I basically had to, like, close the game out but it allowed me to jump back in the game i'm underwater almost dead i'm dead yes swim the shore get geared up i had to run across the map oh crap i fell off but i had to run across the map uh found a guy killed him it's just like little moments in the game that uh 
can't be accounted for that just makes it so much fun like getting to jump on somebody or the physics of the game like you think you're going to kill this guy but he has a pan on his back and the bullet physics bounce off the pan and and then he turns around and kills you that's awesome you kind of get mad but like at the same time you can't be mad because it's like the pan was right there so I even saw a clip where like a car went over the hill and there was a guy on top of the hill and like the tire hit the top of his helmet but it had like the little audio sound of the tire hitting the helmet like ding, and he died <laughs> and I laughed for like about five minutes because I was like that's awesome they actually took the time to include that like uh huh that sounds like a cool engine and a, like a cool world to play in for sure man I've seen some it's of cool. the worlds in there oh uh, I fell off guys Okay. Like, uh, I got you, Chase. Like, for early access game, I think is uh, it's really good. Whereas yeah. other early access yeah. games I played tend to fall in the I'm cycle down. of, like, I don't know if they run out Earth of money survival. or they get too comfortable where the game is. But, like, I played H1Z1, and that game promised a lot of things. Uh, and they, they had a survival portion, but they had the battle royale portion. Portion. I yeah. think that's kind of like jump started that whole genre of yeah. uh, battle royale. Now you're seeing a lot of different games come out doing the uh, same thing. But mm-hmm. H1Z, uh, H1Z1 had something good, and they just kind of like got comfortable where it was, and just didn't take advantage of like what they had. And PUBG was able to come out of nowhere and take the crown from them, basically, and yeah. do things much better. Like I like the gun mechanics like you have like bullet drop you have different guns different attachments um i like their their med system where like h1z1 you can just use a a a health pack and you'll just get all your health back but like in PUBG, you use a a med kit you get full health if you use a first aid you only get like 70 percent then you have to find like uh Energy drinks are painkillers to top the rest of the uh, life back up. Wow. So, to me, I, I like that mechanic. And also, like, you can't jump out the car at 100 miles an hour, shotgun somebody, <laughs> jump back in the car, and keep going. You jump out the car in PUBG going, like, anything more than five miles an you hour, gone. you're dead. <laughs> hey, I like gone. that. That's how it should be. Yeah. Okay, I'll try to get to you. Yeah. That's awesome, bro. Um, I, I just think also they had why it's being uh, becoming so successful. It just seemed like they wrote uh, sticking to, and people are receiving that well. And they're also not doing micro transactions before yeah. the game is actually released. I've heard that one of the things that make the game really popular is the fact that it is relatively simple. It doesn't overcomplicate yeah. itself. Yeah. There's a lot yeah. of games nowadays. There's too many power ups. There's too many. Like, like classes. There's too little many challenges that are secret. Do, like, in a lot of games. And when you're trying to attract a new audience to a game, um, I mean, you look at some of the games that have been most successful over the years. I mean, Counter Strike, Counter Strike Go continues to be successful after how many years? You know, yeah, and it's partly because it's relatively simple in premise. Yeah. You know, it, it's yeah, old school. Really. You you can That's jump in, play, yeah. and pick it up easy if you want to. Where yeah. You gotta like, you have a skill tree with a million di- different options, and it's like, what is going on here? I don't feel like I think, reading a two-page yeah. tutorial on how to pick. You know, it's funny because we were talking about that game Fortnite tonight, and that was the thing that threw me off. I'm looking at Fortnite, and I'm like, I'm not interested, like, because I saw people stream it online, and it looked yeah. just too complicated. There was too much stuff going on. I'm like, yeah, it's a shooter at heart. Shoot, like. I don't want to play a Lego <laughs> game and have a shooter in the middle of it. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. come on. <laughs> For you know? sure, bro. For That's, sure. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think H1Z1 just exploded back. I mean, not just H1Z1, but w- there was a, another mod for uh, Arma. Or was that H1Z1? Mm. I can't remember. But um, it, it, there was a, there was actually, a zombie guy, mod. Uh, and, it's like the lead uh, developer worked on the Arma mod, I think. Well, oh, it wow. seems like a lot of those guys that played that when it exploded and it was announced that it was going to come to PlayStation Network online and whatnot, um, it seems like a lot of those guys have kind of migrated to PUBG, and I think that's why it's exploded so much. I mean, maybe I'm wrong yeah. on that, but that's what it seems like to me. 
play it on Xbox because from what I heard, everyone that played either. it at uh, Gamescom actually said, man, they actually did a really good job at like better than I expected. I, there were some questions I had about, you know, how the equipment was going to be equipped and how it didn't seem like it was going to be right. And, you know, the, the developer came out and said he wanted cross play, but that's why they're bringing keyboard and mouse support to the console store, so that it can make more of that equal. And, mm-hmm. um, the thing about it is though, even there's still some disadvantages. Um, but I think, uh, they're, they'll be smart if they do it in a game preview stay on the console as well and I think make it to where they're going to have a maybe even a controller only playlist i don't know how they would regulate that but they'd be very smart too i think yeah didn't uh, you say like keyboard and mouse support was coming for that or something well that's that's what i keep seeing on twitter yeah. and on n4g and neil gaff and you know all the that would be crazy. Some people said it is coming soon, mm-hmm. but soon to them, there you know it could be next month, it could be a couple months, whatever you know. But yeah, the thing true. is, there's <laughs> there's a couple games when the One X came or not One X when the Xbox One originally came out, and they first made the keyboard where you could chat. You know, you could use it for chat. Yeah, there was a couple times when it was like that. I was like, God, I wish I could play this. I wish I could play Battlefield Four, and I wish I could play Halo and all this because I I was so good with keyboard and mouse on, on even Call of Duty when I played. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, back in Modern Warfare, that's how I got my nickname as Nightcrawler. Uh, was with a keyboard and mouse, just shitting on people on the Modern Warfare, you know, called <laughs> Modern Warfare. And so, like, pretty much, man. Um, and I, you know, with a controller, I love the controller. I love the, the, the being a console gamer. I love, like, the older I get, the more I love just kind of coming home, chilling, firing up the old Xbox, and it works yeah. just as good for what it does, kind of thing. Um, and there's something to be said about that, and I'm used to the controller. But I tell you what, once I get used to the keyboard, it was it was like I don't know, it was like butter and sex. It was smooth, you know. Like, <laughs> yes. well, I'm still there's, trying to get used to my keyboard well, and mouses. Let me tell you, yeah, uh, man, but it's better. Once you get used to it, and when you go back, it feels like terrible. It's like what? Let me just say, this? I'm coming to your house for a visit. I'm staying away from your fucking butter tub. <laughs> All right, bro. Pro- yeah, you, you probably should. <laughs> Hey, it's brand a loaf of bread and a smile, dude. That's all you gotta do, buddy. Uh, all you gotta do, bro. <laughs> a loaf of bread. We'll call, you, we'll call you a wonder bread. What? <laughs> oh. oh, God. <laughs> the Lord. That's nasty. Uh, That's yeah. really nasty. This is Richard from Digital Foundry, and now we will show you Jones's butter in 4K 60 frames per second. Stunning. Oh, my God. <laughs> I love it. I love Chase's digital foundry. Sex is just not not possible. Sex is just not possible, gentlemen. When it drops down to 720p and hits about 20 frames a second, (laughs) somewhere along the line, she just looks at you and says, what the fuck is going on? My bollocks literally dragged the ground 720p. I love it. I love it. Okay, uh, let's uh, let's get Christian in on the Where conversation. Where do I put this ball in the hole at, guys? Real quick. I have a ball um, that's dropping the hole. Just got to find it. <laughs> so well, let's have a brief discussion on Black Ops 3. Um, and it's actually been interesting it's because it's been one of the most most played games. And there's been, uh, you know, Infinite Warfare has come out after it. And that's kind of Challenge. has to be embarrassing. Um and it, it's sad to me too because uh, those games, the uh, what am, what's the word I'm looking for here, guys? Who makes those? Just went blank. The, Treyarch. Uh, no, not Treyarch. Uh, the guy that makes my favorite games. Activision. Yeah, Activision does all the Call of Duties. Um, oh man, I'm going blank here. What are you talking about? The publisher. Activision is the publisher, yeah. but Infinity Ward was the original Call of Duty. Thank you, maker. thank you, Nick. Infinity Ward. Oh, I got you. I was Infinity brain farting there. Sorry, Infinity Ward me. games used to be my favorite Call of Duty. It's like Call of Duty Four, Modern Warfare Two. I mean, I love those games. No but longer. Infinite Warfare just did not resonate with me at all. Um, it it yeah. was 
trash. It just got a, it just to me like I mean I'll give them credit for that okay game. In some that ways. they they did some things that were really cool with the game, and I'll give them at least some credit for trying something different. Yeah. But obviously the fans weren't ready to be that different. We weren't ready to play Call of Duty Halo Edition. Yeah. Um, you know that's basically <laughs> exactly. what it is. Exactly. Exactly. Um, you know, like, because further. you had yeah. Titanfall. You know, you had Titanfall, yeah. and Titanfall set a precedent to you. And, uh, yeah, and this game came out, and like I, it, like I said, it tried some good things, but I think overall, like, to me, that's what lost me on the series. They're get, they were getting far too futuristic, and, um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't like it, you know? Yeah. Um, so, Shaggy, we're in the middle of the podcast. I don't know. Let's we'll see here. RP. Not finally. Nah, it's good. I can just keep talking. Okay. I do okay. like that. I don't think. Oh, okay. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. okay. Good. Good. Yeah. No, I just uh, stopped for a second. Yeah, it's good. No, there's not much okay. else to say. Like, I, I love Infinity War. I still think they make technically the best Call of Duty game. Um, yeah. You know, but the thing is that Treyarch. Treyarch made a name for themselves more for the zombies yes. than, they, the, than they did for the actual, like, the, the actual, actual regular multiplayer. Yeah, the like, zombies that's what were set them apart. okay, honestly. Right? Now, I think the zombies I used too to be, much. I used to be on the Infinity War train until they copied completely off of Treyarch. Yeah. And Treyarch continues yeah. to this day to update Black Ops 3. And I, I gotta exactly, be honest, dude, yeah. it used to be a game that I would just... Want to throw my controller at and go, dude? The connection is broken. I can't even play right now. What's going on? But I tell mm-hmm. you what, man. I don't know what update they did or whatever. But every time I go and play it, now my connection's smooth. I'll go positive. I, f- I have a fun experience. I don't know what's happened, but the movement system is fun because it's their original movement system for the jetpack yeah. cod. Whereas Infinite Warfare stole that formula. They made it a heavier yeah. feeling Black Ops Three. Uh, the only thing that was cool was kind of like the garrisons and the different stories with that. That was kind of cool, you know, and I think they're going to kind of carry that on with World War II and stuff, and that that's all neat and fine and dandy. Right. I, don't, I don't care either way. Um, mm-hmm. The only thing is, is Infinite Warfare was, I actually had fun with it for about a week, and then I just kind of was like, okay, there's too much. It's just too much. Like, I want to max prestige. I want to do this, but I would rather just play Modern Warfare. I'd rather just play uh, no. Battlefield 1. I'd rather just play Destiny. I, You know, it just kind of got to the point where it's like, okay, I, I admire what they did graphically. Um, and it, it, to me, even more so than just felt like Halo COD, it felt like Black Ops 3 2. I, I don't know. Yeah. I didn't like that. I, I wanted it to be something totally different. I wanted it to be maybe futuristic, but totally boots to the ground. Maybe with yeah. some type of boost thrown in. <laughs> you know, it, to be just, honest, it, it just didn't feel right. I was hoping that they were going to do, like, Call of Duty Vietnam. I heard rumors ages ago they yeah. were going to do something like that, and they never did. You know, I, I think they probably had that. a vote on it and you know. voted not to do it. Just like, you know, uh, uh, who is it? Sledgehammer voted to do World War II, and it won by barely one vote, apparently, in the studio. You know, I don't know how true that is, but that's one thing they said. Yeah. They, the developers yeah. said they had a vote on it, and they were gonna. They were really close to making a, you know, a uh, futuristic COD. And you know what? Advanced Warfare, I think, did futuristic COD about damn better than any of them. Uh, Advanced Warfare was a game that, you know, it wasn't necessarily my favorite in some ways, but in some ways, it was one of the only CODs that I could totally, constantly get all my streaks in, man. I would get. I could get the highest. It was the first COD I could get the very highest yeah. streak in. Whereas Blake can always get the highest streak, so it, it made me feel like just as good of, and a part of the team on Dom and stuff. When I could get the uh, the big airship that bombed everybody and stuff, that made me feel good. It's the only COD I was ever able to do that. Yeah, and then, see, that's my that's what broke my heart when I played uh, World War II. You know, my question to you is though. It was it really the best COD, or was it just the best COD simply because you found a groove in that game where you could dominate multiplayer? Because, I mean, there's lots of multiplayer it's games that, that I absolutely fucking suck at, but I still love the game. Like, to be <laughs> honest, I fucking suck at Halo 5. I wouldn't call me very good at it anymore, but I, I still love it. Like, I, like yeah. I don't get dissuaded by playing it. I know there's going to be a lot of people that 
they they live on that game is what I'm saying. And you know yeah. when you come yeah. against a, a guy who's really good at Halo because they do no scope sniper rifle shots like they're fucking sitting in front of you with an SMG, you know, and you're like, yeah, that person plays this shit a lot. That would be less. Um, so that's my question. Because Call of Duty World War <laughs> yeah. II, I mean, honestly, I, I thought it played okay. I mean, it was a little laggy, but hopefully they fix a lot of that with the, with the beta testing and stuff. And the graphics, well, the graphics, they were Call of Duty. Like, they're not terrible. They weren't they, even Call of Duty. They certainly don't Duty. look up to... They didn't live Ugh. up to, like, like even Battlefield. Battlefield games have sort of stretched the envelope, but Call of Duty yes. has been stagnant. I tell you what, I think, though, I think EA's Black Ops 3 and Infinite standard. Warfare look ten times better than uh, World War II does. Yeah, I just think their character models and it looks so grainy. But yeah. to me, with that, the feel, I just like the grenades felt weird. You know, and I know it's a beta. I know there's a lot of stuff that they can work out to make the game possibly even fun to me. I did like the war game concept, not the war games. What was it called? You know, uh, uh, yeah, war oh, mode. Gosh. That's what it's called. Yeah, war mode uh, was was fun, but it just looked like like when I played Battlefield One, and it has a very similar game mode in Rush. Um, in the frost, in the really good looking Frostbite Three engine, engine, it's it's hard to be impressed with that game, and that that was my yeah. thing. It's like, why would I pay sixty bucks for a new game when I can scratch the exact same itch on a game I already own? Um, yeah. However, on the that's me personally. That is only me. Like, there's people that, that argue or may get mad at my opinion, but the thing is, like to me, I think it's so awesome that people played Call of Duty World War Two beta. And said, "Wow, this is the first COD I've had fun with in years. This is the first COD game I've played in four or five CODs. I think that is awesome because I am a Call of Duty fan. I'm not one of the guys oh. that goes, oh, it's the best yeah. looking or this. Bro. No, dude, I, I'm a huge Call of Duty fan. I love Thanks. it. I've played almost every. I've played every COD until World War II, uh, and love it, and want this series to succeed because I always have seen it as like this fun arcade get kill streaks kind of game." And yeah. I love it. I think it has a place with all the other games. I'm not one that goes, just because they're making the same game, I'm not going to play it. No, that's not me. No. I like it. I like Call of Duty. Hey, man. I like your, your, you know? your opinion is just as valid whether you like it or dislike it than yeah, anybody yeah. else's. And you don't back down from well, it. Well, I'm going to be just straight up cup of tea, about what I like and don't like, bro. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and at the end of the day, it's your money to spend it on whatever you want. And sure, exactly. you know... Um, you know, but see, like, here's the thing with me, too, and there's one difference. It's like, I've never, ever purchased any Call of Duty games strictly for the multiplayer. I normally have always purchased for the campaigns. Same with Gears yes. of War. Oh, like, to me, cool. multiplayer is a I bonus. I bet World War II is going to be awesome. It's campaign. a bonus I guarantee. that, yeah. you know, it's a bonus that I like, but it's not something that makes me, you know. And this is Sledgehammer-based game. Like, I don't know how... Like what reputation these guys have? Because basically, Sledgehammer rose to fame with. Uh, they came in on Modern Advanced Warfare, Warfare 3. Right? Remember? Yeah. No, actually, was Modern Warfare 3 is the game they first had um, had uh, their hands on. Remember? Remember the whole fiasco? Oh, really? With Infinity Ward after Vince Sampella and them left. Yeah. Yeah. They left. They yeah. left before Modern Warfare oh, they 3 was it. technically done, or just before they, just before it was actually, and uh, the team was left in limbo. After Zampel and them left, and they had to hire a lot of new employees, and that's why they brought in Sledgehammer to help finish out the multiplayer, and that's why Sledgehammer now has the reputation of being that third-string developer for the Call of Duty franchise. Yeah. So that's where well, right now, should, that's their origin story. story. Infinite Warfare, <laughs> which I hate to say it because I love Inf- or in, not Infinite War, Infinity War, because I I. I I grew up with Blake. I was a little brother to Blake, and he was a huge fan. So you know, you always kind of follow your big brother on that. But um, in the past recent years, the older I get, though, the more I'm liking the Black Ops stuff, man. I, I, like I don't hate to say it either. I, I really enjoy those games. Like they they scratch that arcade itch, so to speak. Okay, uh, let's uh, okay. let's let Christian. Christian, do you t- like so, the? Do you like the supply so drops? Yes. Do you like the supply drops and the contracts? Well, let me just say that Activision and Treyarch always make, make me come back to Black Ops 3 because, uh-huh. like, take the game I'm playing right now, for example, Titanfall 2. Like, I was getting into this game, then I was, like, in a uh, party with some of my buddies, and I was like, dude, 
Do you know they have a new offer on uh, Black Ops 3? Yeah, it's called the Grand Slam. And I'm just like, oh boy. Now I come back to that game, and you either buy it or you have to grind for it. So being yeah. the broke person that I am, I had to grind for it. <laughs> yeah, so, and I love that. I love that it gives you that option. You know? And uh, so do you feel like that that game is pay to win because I know that's a big accusation of it a lot of pays, games that have to play it, like, it, it keeps bringing people back and like Chase said it's been they have redeemed themselves I mean I remember when we all played it and mm-hmm. we were just like holy crap why is this lagging and I don't know yeah. like I said like Chase said they're just like I don't know what happened but they like <laughs> seriously upgraded. I'm down, dude. And yeah, um, they did, bro. Sorry. And that's what I love about it. And I will keep coming back to that game if they keep making more deals and keep making the game better. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, that's that's Just how I feel well. about it too. Okay, now guys, let's get into an amazing topic. Star Wars Battlefront 2. Yeah, baby. So, it's <laughs> coming out. The game glory. I will buy instead of World War 2. Hashtag glory. Amen. Okay. Amen. Um, so, it's coming out November 17th, 2017, for um, all platforms. And maybe not Switch, I don't know. RIP. And uh, story driven <laughs> single player campaign. And multiplayer character classes, which those both sound freaking amazing. <laughs> oh, and the story campaign is going to have cross era characters and locations. So to me, that sounds like a fanboy Bring dream. Bring me Darth Balls. That sounds like a fanboy dream. And um, uh, have you, any of y'all seen the Starfighter Assault gameplay trailer? Oh my goodness. Yes, that looks, that looks like. Incredible. Well, dude, that's that's one thing about that game. They actually hired a third-party studio to literally design specifically the space battles, um, wow. knowing, knowing that they wanted to focus on the ground yeah. and focus on whatever. They actually that got so a, cool. a studio just to specific. And to me, games that do that usually run better. And I think even the original mm-hmm. Battlefront might have done something similar. Yeah. Um, I'm ready. I, I like just from looking at the detail. I think that has paid off in in tenfold, man. And uh, dude, mm-hmm. the space battles in Battlefront One are cool. They're kind of hard to get a hold of. They're kind of hard to figure out. Even though it's sim simple, there's to be good at it. There's a, there's a I don't know. There's a trick to it. There's uh, yeah, a learning curve. To it. You have to like kind of aim in a certain way and time your shots right. And it's kind of hard, but. It, it's it's hard to explain, but it visually looks good enough. It kind of pulls it through. Whereas this one looks yeah. like the controls are there, the, uh, the the beauty is there, the fantasy is more there rather than it was kind of just based off the characters played specifically in the story. Now it's we have game modes now that's going to really bring it all together, and I yeah. think that's going to make it infinitely better because uh-huh. at the end of the day, Battlefront Front One. For all the flack it got, it wasn't a bad game. It was actually a really one fun of the best game. Looking just kind of, dude, 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 just to try to just, it's it's one of the best games still today. If you just want to kind of like kick it, chill out, not really overthink too much. Yeah. But you want to play something kind of Star Wars, you know? It's a good. It's still a good go to. Yeah. Still have it and still play it time to time. It's a yeah, good go-to it was much, game, man. That game was much like Mass Effect, where it took a lot of flack for all the wrong reasons. I mean, yeah. it did start with, well, graphically, mm-hmm. it's still one of the best-looking games that have come out this generation. And there was a lot of good things to like about it. I mean, obviously, they put the game together in a very short time frame, because essentially, they wanted to get it out with the release of, uh, you know, somewhere in that release path of Episode Seven that year, right? So yeah. that's why, mm-hmm. it, it, obviously, they dropped the campaign. I mean, obviously, just didn't have time. Because remember, it, is, it was DICE who did the entire game the first time. And they were also yeah. just coming off of Battlefield 4. And they also mm-hmm. just were doing Battlefield 1. So they, <laughs> they had, had to try to get pulled. that in between. So they, they were yeah. a busy fucking team. So uh-huh. I don't necessarily it's blame amazing them. That's that they more were on the publisher. 
The publisher's got to yeah. take more of the blame for that. But here's the thing. I mean, the one big thing I heard from a lot of the old Battlefront fans like back on the PS2 and stuff was they were yeah. disappointed that it didn't have a class-based system. You know, yes. and then there were some weapons that were grossly overpowered, like that hand solo, or was the RF-44 or DF-44, that fucking was, oh, yeah. like, people after a week or were going around just, yeah, <laughs> they were just raping people with that thing. Uh -huh. You know, you, you, if you had a shitty gun at all, you like, they'd be like, two shots, they'd kill you every time. You know, so they had a few range, problems. Yeah. But I'll tell you where it did right. It graphically was fine. Play control, it was right mm -hmm. on the money. And lastly, um... It was the fact that it was more noob friendly. Like it was a game that a lot yeah. of people picking up a shooter yeah. could jump into without the complexities of like ranking systems or uh, like complex rank up systems or adding perks. And you know what I mean? It was straight up your yeah, yeah. class or you, you picked the fight. It didn't need more customization gun. options, in my opinion. Yeah. But at the same time, the arcade fun, the like noob kind of fun. Yeah. I like that. There's a place for me even. Like, because I'm not an MLG pro at all. I do good on some games like Destiny, multiplayer, and whatnot. But for the most part, I'm a casual guy, man. I love playing Rock on the Casual List yeah. and playing with my friends more than anything. And that's what I relish to do, man. That, yeah. And that game is a good And go I'm going to go on record. That on. Having no, Battlefront on the Xbox no, and on the PlayStation 4, I'm going to tell you right now, the players on Xbox are far better. Oh, wow. Yeah, right now. Oh, yeah, we all know I that. Play I played on the on the PlayStation That's One, cool, and man. I was wrecking over there compared to the Xbox. X was when you get your ass handed to you. There's a big difference wow. in the the quality of game players on that platform. I mean, maybe not in every game, but I'm trying to get you yeah. to in that one. Okay, buddy. I'm gonna throw down a heal. Yeah, too. well, it says it's gonna have character classes, so I'm assuming that's gonna be more customization. I think so. That sounds. Really I think cool. I'm just excited about that one game mode more than the uh, Squadron or Space Assault thing. I think I'm just as excited about doing the, uh, like, wreck kind of system game mode where you, you, you earn your, your weapons and your ships and you play. It's kind of like the war mode, war zone in, uh, in Halo. Like, I know that's what it's been compared to. I don't know enough about it. I haven't looked enough into it to have a fair uh, uh, discussion on it, per se. But if it's anything like the wreck system on Halo, I think it's going to be a success because, especially as a third-party title, because that was such a good system that Halo, that people go yeah. on record and they will actually like when somebody says oh man this play this you know battlefront or or, or not bro but battlefield and uh you know call of duty or whatever all their rec systems with the best system or timefall 2 there's people that go on there and go man no you, sh you didn't play halo then man because their rec system is um, freaking amazing the way you always unlock something you, you know if you have a gold pack you're always getting a permanent unlock you know it's wonderful and that's what they're comparing battlefront to that's pretty big man and yeah the fact of the yeah. matter is is that they're seeing that okay we're really making enough money off these packs off these microtransactions. Exactly. let's go ahead and, and give them the dlc and have our player base actually play the game longer it's proven to work in halo it's proven to work in battle you know field in some ways and stuff like that it's like what, or not Battlefield, but, you know, like certain games that have the free DLC, yeah. which is uh, like Titanfall and Halo. It's like, I think it's more of anything is EA going, let's just try it on our front and just see. And then we might go to it with the next Battlefield. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like they've yeah. seen other people have success with it, and I think they're they're, they're trying to bring it. I've already talked too long, but that's basically and what I've seen. That. Yeah, the bargain of that but I'm excited is to play free it. DLC, too. Like, I love that. That's freaking awesome because you don't That's the see thing. that way. It's the best of both worlds. You get to it's amazing. One of, yeah, if you want to buy supply drops, you can. But the cool part is you don't split up your community because the DLC That's people, a huge the people part. That don't have. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And That's I'm a huge so thing. excited. That's where Halo about. did it right. Mm -hmm. And and see, and it never affected because more people bought the game because they weren't alienated by spending DLC. Like do microtransactions exactly. because at the end of the day, you know, while they kind of suck. Partly, like nobody's forced to buy a microtransaction, and generally they don't make the game any better. Like they don't give you like usually a weapon that. Would well, make and you can earn everything the hard you know? way too. I mean, that, yeah. if it's like you can only get this gun by buying it, then I don't like that. That's kind of like Dude, what Call of Duty did for a while. Everything I have in Halo Five, I bought with just share points of playing. Exactly. <laughs> Same here, and I got like, the Halo Two battle rifle, and I said my life on Halo Five is now complete, and now I'm good. 
Okay, everything else is just a bonus and sugar on top now. And I'm still getting stuff. I can still go fire yeah. it up right now. I'm not max level. I'll still go earn stuff and feel rewarded for it. Uh, honestly, too, I think if companies are going to charge for DLC, like, say, map packs, I honestly think that automatically after two years, the map packs, if they can't be free, they should at least be automatically reduced to, like, yeah. uh, 70% off. They should be, like, dirt cheap after cheap at least two years. Just yeah. to keep the community thriving. Yeah, keep the game going. Yeah. Well, like, yeah. Like, if you're going to charge, at least make them cheap after a while. Like, I don't think any... Because there's literally games on the marketplace now where the actual game itself is cheaper than the DLC. And that thing's absolutely no Well, sense. like the Call of Duty Black Ops no. 1. I mean, come on, dude. Why is that 15 bucks a piece? Why? Yeah, no doubt. Literally, why? Why, why is that not free? You know, you're promoting yeah. this, you know, you got Microsoft if you make going it back, over back deals, compatible game, trying to make you a big deal again, trying to make your game sell more, which can only be positive for you, make your customer want to buy more games. And you're going to sit there and keep it at $15 a pop, you know, and however much all together. Like, that's stupid. That is stupid like marketing. Stop logic. It's selfishness. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> hey, stop stay logic. alive, dude. <laughs> stay alive for like 20 seconds. You never lied there, there, bro. Like well, and we got a, <laughs> yeah. I want to trade in my Xbox One. That'll be ten dollars, sir. Like what? What are you? I want to trade about? in my Xbox One X. After you buy it, pre-order it for five hundred dollars, we'll give you about. We'll give you about a hundred dollars for it. And in store credit. And we're gonna sell it for four fifty. Worth. <laughs> it yep, will. Yep. We'll turn around and put it on the shelf for five hundred dollars. They're all about that profit. Man. Which shows you actually, technically, if they do something for 450 people are always talking about how they can afford it. Well, wait a couple of months. You'll get it used for something like that, a good little price. Good things come. Come on, man. It's worth that. Man. Come on. That's very It's true. worth that. We it's all know that. Whether, whether it's a game or a console, we all know the moment you buy it. More like good buy things come to those who actually have a job. Like <laughs> yeah, that, that too. Legendary. Because, honestly, whether it's a console, I mean, I'm looking at the Xbox right now. You can go down to EB Games today. You can buy an Xbox One S for three seventy nine Canadian with the one terabyte Gears of War four in the box. Which is like one hundred thirty dollars. Yes. You get you get, you get you get two. You get Destiny two, and you can have your choice of NHL eighteen or NBA two K eighteen. So that's, that's fucking awesome. three games. What a steal! In a one ter. That's amazing. So that's like that's. I think somebody said it's two seventy nine US right now. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's amazing deal. That is, bro. Hey, okay. like I paid 500, I paid we're, we're 500 bucks last year guys. for my ass. Yeah, we are. Okay, Noof, you said the other day that you are a Star Wars fan, so now generally speaking about Star Wars, which right. is your favorite film? Uh, my favorite film in the entire franchise is hands down, uh, I still think is Return of the Jedi. Mm, okay. Dude, we are brothers. We are brothers. <laughs> brothers. I love Return. Holy I know some shit. people didn't like. I know some people didn't like the Ewok part of it, but I actually thought they were Bro. really cool. And I love. They're just bears. And and I, you know, I'm yeah, freaking out right now because <laughs> everybody says Empire, 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 and my favorite is of the old ones, especially if we're just specifically talking the first three or last three, whatever. Uh, yeah. Dude, always, 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 I've said Return of the Jedi, and it's because of, I love the whole movie, I love the the happy feeling of the end, even though the main thing is the part where Luke has to kind of tar- tap into his dark side, you yeah. know, Darth Vader finally gets to him, and he says, Darth, and it plays that epic-ass John <laughs> Williams music, it's like, Whoa, oh, his music is great. do 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 and he like goes ham on Vader, dude. dude. I, oh my God. I still watch that. What can I say? Get... <laughs> he he, he so kills. Good. He kills so a giant good. ugly ass rancor by throwing a rock at the control panel. It was so cool. <laughs> He's a beast, <laughs> yeah. and he smacks you know, both. Look, pr- right in the Princess lady. Princess Leia was half Spoiler naked alert. in the first part of the movie, and she looked absolutely badass. Mm. Can we just say glory? Yeah. We need to have and a moment was of attached, silence for her. She was attacked my penis after the swimming pool. <laughs> <laughs> and somehow she made that look good, that scene. I mean, so. Absolutely. 
It had Boba Fett in it, you know? Like, it was just a badass movie. It was so cool. Yeah. And then you got to see Darth was... Vader's face for the first time, mm-hmm. you know? And when you were either disappointed so or true, completely bro. like, oh, my God, that wrinkly old scrotum, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. <laughs> and this game clearly pulled from that, like we were talking about the other night on the main villains, I think. That kind of theme. Um, okay, now, Les, I got a question for you. Okay, so the prequels, the prequel trilogy, yay or nay? No Sounds like he's in the wash and taking a piss, like, yeah, that's what I think. <laughs> no, that's me. Sorry, guys, I couldn't hold you on. <laughs> that's all good, dude. I love it. I love it. Chase, I'm just getting so excited Chase, about these topics. Chase always has the most. Tra- he's literally trademark pissing during playing. That's what I've noticed now. He's got his tra- <laughs> because like he always brings the controller with him, and you can hear him take a big long leak. That's dedicated. Dude, that's because I'm I'm I, I, I'm so in the mood or or in the feel with my controller. That I feel like if I let go of my controller, I, I just I'll hope you wash so. your hands after you fucking done, because otherwise go. uh, you're gonna have a controller. state of jizz crumbs on there. <laughs> Can't do it, man. It's against the guy code. There's there's okay. natural guy acid on the hands, and it's gonna okay. Hands. Um, <laughs> okay. Christian, <laughs> who, who is your favorite character of Star Wars? Who's my favorite character of Star Wars? Well. Uh, are you talking about from the movies? Yeah. Or just in general? Okay, so from the movies would have to be Darth Maul, just because of just, he's Darth such Maul's an unorthodox, oh, this one's hard, he's yes. an unorthodox character. Actually, I have two, and Anakin Skywalker, because, um, both of them are, like, legendary, like, Darth Maul was, like, he was from the planet Dathomir and he was like hooked up by some like witch sisters that's what the books say anyways that's crazy and um and um Anakin was just kind of just wow yeah and uh was kind of cool with with that y'all don't know about this you know how he was supposedly died in the Phantom Menace well in the Clone Wars story arc he like he is like alive and he's like a, on a junkyard planet with like he's. He's insane. basically like Jesus. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's insane and he has like robotic <laughs> legs, and That's he's crazy. like found by his like a um, one of his own races um, that would be known. It was as, his brother, like, wasn't it? Not exactly. It was like a brother or a half brother or something. They weren't blood brothers. They were like hooked up by some witch sisters, and they were. Cole mm. brothers, because they're of the same race. But <coughs> okay, but well, yeah, as uh, that okay, well, thank you for yeah, thanks for sharing that, bro. That Christian always knows like the crazy lore of things. That's one thing. Yeah, I'm he gets deep with it. I've read about, the same which book is super cool. About, though. Yeah, I mean so I that's super I cool. Like an extra nerd too. The nerd cousin in me is very proud of him. Um, yes. Okay. Okay. Now, as an aside, kind of, let's talk about, or, or you know, we'll see how it goes. But talk about um, L.A. Noir coming November fourteenth for backwards compatible from Rockstar Games. Uh, for those of you it's that don't know what it is, um, it's going to have like, it's it's you're a detective in nineteen forties Los Angeles, and some of the cases are inspired by real world cases, which is super cool to me. And that's like the gritty, almost romanticized, like time period of, of the LA. So it's super cool it's, if you ever had mobs. Terrible. They, re- they remastered it, Blake. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah, and it's gonna have like it has an Xbox amazing One X too. Dark feel, yeah, and it's gonna have enhancements. It's gonna have uh, weather and smog and lighting effects gonna be enhanced. It's going to have real-time reflections on vehicles and dirt and chrome effects to give it that next-gen look. And there's going to be high-res textures. And it has... So it it sounds like if you're like a graphics person that this is going to be a treat. Um, And it's going to have native 1080p on Xbox One. 
and 4K for the One X. So that's going to be glorious, I think. Can I make a little point? I, like, okay, I haven't. I, I won't make a long point on this because I never really, I never played it. I only watched you play, Blake. Yeah. But one thing I was impressed more than anything was reading about it in like Game Informer and knowing that how much work they put in. They were actually mm-hmm. were in real film studios filming these scenes for the game and stuff. And on the 360 where, where you played, the facial expressions looked like real life. I mean, we oh, were like, yeah. what? Yeah. Like, oh, that bitch. Like, I remember we yeah. said, like, oh, that bitch is lying. Right uh-huh. now, she's so lying. It's that, amazing. That bitch done, she, done, <laughs> she, she ate the grasshopper and That's she shit it out on Farmer be. John's lawn. I know she did. Yep. That's what she done did. Yep. And uh, no, we yep. did that. And dude, we used to just like, and then we, we would see if we got it right or if we got it wrong, you know. And uh, that's yeah, one thing man. that I think is going to be so awesome because it looked that good. 360. It's such a good game. Like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think anybody yeah. that anybody that likes investigation and mystery too is going to that's all i gotta say about it but that's awesome that, just from outside yeah. looking in I, that's that's definitely a, a game that i think is I, and could be a showcase for graphics no doubt I, i've got to admit to me about investigative games i will <laughs> buy that game in a heartbeat i have got to admit and i'm embarrassed to admit that was one game i never did play on the 360 era so i'm kind of excited to go back now and get the definitive version well, kind oh, yeah. of, and I'll tell you why. Uh, because actually, I'm more excited for it on the Nintendo Switch, oddly enough. And the reason nice. being is because, uh, because it is, again, at the end of the day, it is a remaster, right? You know what I mean? So yeah. I'm excited for it to the Switch because I want to get more diverse titles for this. Because I actually want to justify the fact that I paid this money for this awesome Nintendo console. And that's one thing that in order for this Switch to be successful, long term it needs to say la noir and the gtas and stuff to have longevity mm-hmm. i don't want just super mario games all the time like as fun as those are i want to i want to yeah. play hockey i want to play good football games i want to have some mature yeah. rated games so you know what like some variety. i can get it for the xbox great but like for me like i, I want to take advantage of those titles on the switch if that makes any sense to anybody because i can take yeah. it on the go and I can play it on the big screen, and, and it'll look just fine on the Switch, I'm sure. It'll probably even have, you know, probably some pumped-up uh, f- effects more so than the older versions, yeah. right? Because it is, you know. Yeah, So awesome. that's all I'm going to say, and, and, and there's on other games handheld. coming out, too. Oh, yeah. So cool. I'll but tell I you what, bro, but... I don't have a Switch, but I, well, the Mario Odyssey thing. It's improved over 360. It's like Xbox cool. One level. Yeah. It's going to look good on portable. What I want sure. a Switch for is for freaking Skyrim. Oh my gosh, that sounds no so doubt. cool. To play yeah, Skyrim. Oh yeah, horrible handheld. Skyrim. That sounds I like passed sex. up on buying Skyrim for the Xbox One X as soon as I heard it was coming for the Switch. I'm like, I'd just rather have it on the on the Switch or uh you know, yeah. I'd rather get the Switch version cuz at least I can take it on the go and Skyrim you know I mean? on the go sounds so cool. Well, you'll be able to get Skyrim cheap for the Xbox One X because it's already announced that so it's going to have 4K yeah. update. That's gonna be sexy in native 4K, man. It's art like on the enhanced edition on my 4K TV. It's you know upscaled from 1080p. It already looks like mind-boggling. Like some of the sky effects and stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm like, wow, that looks yeah. like too good. That's insane. It does, bro. And uh, like when you just do that thing where you stand still and it does the pan shot. So I can only imagine like uh, it on the you know 4K native. Like that's gonna be stupid. Mm-hmm. Dude, that's gonna be. Awesome. I'm gonna go back. Just well, I was gonna around. say, I'll still uh, play with the mods buy, and whatnot. But I might have to buy two versions because I might. Yeah, I might want to get that new enhanced version for the X though, with all the mods. Yeah. Uh, but hey, man. The Switch too. <laughs> <laughs> portable, portable Skyrim that you can still that play your game. So you know, and plug um, it in. I mean, you can still plug it in. It's gonna upscale to you know 1080 and stuff on the on the screen as well. It'll still look great. It'll still look just as good as, as the Xbox One. You know, portable almost. You know, and then just yeah. as good. You know, on the when it's docked. I will. I will say though. I think it's cool, X, man. I will say with the Switch version, guys, and don't quote me on this. I could be wrong, but you know how they're advertising that Zelda stuff. Yeah. As far as I can tell, you can only get that if you buy the Zelda amiibos. So if oh, that wow. is true, that would kind of suck because then you literally have to go out and buy these fucking. That was like, one of the main allures of the game. 
Yeah. Yeah, I mean, is in the game, well, but as far as I can tell, they said it unlocks with the Amiibos, and I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, because that's a way for oh, Nintendo no. to make oh, a mean? shitload more money on their part, right? Yeah. And people will buy oh, yeah. it because they'll want that fucking suit and they want the Master Sword. So. It's all business. Uh huh. That's crazy. That's kind of smart, I guess, in some way. But, uh, I don't, want I don't know with the mods, though, I could have all that. Though, yeah. yeah. Just, so just cool let me download mods. it for fucking five dollars. I don't want the dumbass toys. <laughs> You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, they'd be smart that, to do yep. that too, really. Fuck, I gotta bring that on the bus somewhere and I gotta hook up a little figure to it. People will be laughing and kill themselves. Look at this fucking guy. Yeah. <laughs> How old do you say you were? Uh, uh, 40, 40, 40, ma'am. 40, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> like, come on, man. Yeah, yeah, I, I feel you, bro. I'm, I'm there with you. I'm 26, but I'm, I mean, I'm right there with you. I got a bright Ingram. That sounds awesome. That's what you uh, turn into the. Uh, you turn into the, the tower. yeah, the yeah. girl, and she'll give you something cosmetic or like a dance move. So that's pretty cool, man. I, I like how much they added to this this title. Okay, uh, let me real quick. Point. Yeah, we're gonna get into Destiny, but right yeah. before we do that, just as an aside, I wanted to read a quote from Assassin's Creed Origins director, which I know we're all Ooh, pretty yeah. excited about that title. Let's go. Uh, this Assassin's is super Creed. cool. He called Xbox One X the most beautiful version of the game, and here is his quote. Probably and I quote, It has sport. been a pleasure working on Scorpio. It has been quite easy to have our game running at a really high fidelity very quickly. With Xbox One X, the game is beautiful. Kudos to yeah. our artists, engineers, and technical directors. The I'm game like looks six. absolutely stunning. I think with Xbox One X, it's the most beautiful version we have because it's rendering at a high resolution. Mm. We have more RAM to play with. There's a lot more tools at our disposal to showcase our creative work. So, what do y'all, does that make y'all the slobber and excitement there? Dude, I was already excited <laughs> yeah, about it, to be honest. And uh, yeah. now I'm like twice as excited because it's it seems like Good. It's brought the excitement back to Assassin's Creed, and I'm not going to get into the 4K 30 or 1080 yeah. 60. That's been gone through enough. But uh, yeah. more than anything, We're... I think the gameplay looks beautiful and fun and exciting and RPG esque and Witcher 3 esque even. Um, yeah, man. Like uh, what he's saying, I think it's been optimized so good for the system. I think Microsoft even said, hey, make it a point to say all that, you know. Um, but either way, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for Assassin's Creed again. I'm definitely going to pick it up. If not, uh, probably not right away, to be honest, because I can only buy so many games in my budget. And mm -hmm. it'll be one of those things I'll probably buy, you know, maybe after it comes out. I might buy it before. I don't know what I'm going to do, honestly. <laughs> Yeah. I'm, I'm weird with games, you know, but um, I'm just gonna be lucky the, the, to get the, the X right now. So I start. The main yeah. character looks so <laughs> good, and yeah, uh, it looks like a badass. And you're you're playing as a magi. I mean, that's sick. You're basically like an Egyptian police, and so I'm all down with that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, there's that. There's the yeah. having to tame, tame crocodiles and, and that kind of thing. And wow. um. And, and just the story missions and the fact that there's NPCs in the world that kind of do their own thing and, and you can interact with them. You can say, hey, I don't want you to rob this crypt, you know, right in the middle of the thing. Or you can be going to do a mission and a huge sandstorm comes and wipes you all away, but makes it to where you're hidden and you can kill people. Yeah. Stuff like that, man, dude. That's Assassin's Creed, but next level. And that's what it's needed to be. It, it needed to do something different in there. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. I, I've, I've yeah. already talked too much. I don't want to take y'all's time on it, but that's just, I'm, I'm, I'm freaking so excited about it. Uh, the combat looks good. Everybody says it's like Dark Souls S. Hopefully not that hard, because then I might not like it. But, uh, I am I am looking for challenging and good gameplay as well. Christian, are you excited about it, man? Yeah, I, I've played a lot of Assassin's Creed games over the years. Assassin's Creed 4, Assassin's Creed 3, Brotherhood, and they... <laughs> With each game they create, they keep evolving. The combat, the stealth tactics. Well, that's not what the, everybody says, but I agree with you in some ways. Yeah. I mean, like Chase said, like sandstorms. 
you can hide it like when a sandstorm is happening and kill people. Like that that's sick. never been done before in <laughs> yeah. other games. Like Assassin's Creed Four, you could like mount up a ship, ship and like destroy little <laughs> little mount turret. Up a ship. <laughs> my, my bad. Uh, That'll destroy something. Uh, I mounted up a ship yesterday. And my life little, said uh, I'm dead. Little be a uh, little bitty uh, ships that go by. That was fun. Yeah. And Assassin's Creed Three doing the whole uh, revolution. It's just all. Oh, I love that. And one. plus, it's in ancient Egypt. I've never like. Seen I know that, that sounds before. super cool. Yeah. yeah. And we all saw gameplay at, um, what was it? Uh, oh, crap, oh, I, I watched it, it native 4K uh, on mm-hmm. the, uh, when they did the IGN, 18 minute gameplay. And it that alone, well, they released go, the oh, trailer I'm about it and a little bit of gameplay on the, the Yeah. God, did y'all see that where the dude yeah. had the spear and completely impaled a guy? Like, oh my god, that looked <laughs> Great. That, that was on the 18 minute game, gameplay, but it was so yeah. good. I was like, wow. I can't wait to do that. Oh, they showed gameplay. I'm going to get nasty with that game. That's where I remember it from. Yeah. Yeah, the bow was awesome in that one. But I, I love how they added the RPG elements more than anything. I love how they added the. Well, okay. You know, they. they oh, God, I'm about to get murdered, guys. This is so scary. Um. Anyway. I mean, oh, yeah, I'm dead. <laughs> Uh, but I'm excited Whoa. to get like a purple or legendary item, you know, from this killing a big boss. And now I'm about to own a guy that might be even a level higher than me. I mean, there's so many questions that the fact that they changed the whole system, it raises now, you know? I mean, that's what I'm so excited about. There's there's whole new questions now. And uh, it, it really raises this the ante. I think I'm about to make it through, maybe. There's little parts yeah, is, where you can like kind of dip out of. This here. is so cool. This is, this is the one from the beta that me and Nuke yeah. got all the way to the last boss, and I have we never kept seen this. Randoms, this is we kept having sweet. Uh, yeah, this is we from kept the beta, having yeah. uh, randoms uh, back out on us and stuff, and we never got to beat it. So basically, what I'm getting at Nuke is this is redemption time, baby. Oh yeah. Redemption time. Yeah, we got a good trooper now. And oh, we got yeah. Much yeah, we got Blake now. Butt. Yeah. Yeah, well, personally, well, guys, my thoughts, my thoughts on Assassin's Creed Origins. I want to, I would all give the team credit. This looks like the most innovative and perhaps the biggest step forwards in the franchise in yes. a long time. I mean, graphically, it looks amazing. No matter what system it's being played on, it's one of the most impressive titles we're going to see this year. Uh, I am looking <laughs> forward to the enhancements provided by the X, including the smoother frame rate and stuff. It, you know, you got to believe what the guy says. It's going to be the best version. I mean, why not? If you look at the regular consoles, I mean, neither one of them are even pushing uh, two teraflops, and yet we've got six teraflops of processing CPU power in there. Uh, you know what I mean? And everything else, plus the extra RAM, which is going to do a lot for the draw distance and things like that. Now, I'm not a huge mm. Assassin's Creed fan, so like that's why I'm not getting like super blown up on the title. Like It's it's a game that I might buy it, but I'm very doubtful I'll buy it like day one. It's probably one of those games I yeah. pick up when it's cheaper on sale. Same. Maybe that's a smart. Boxing Day or a fucking... Black Friday, the same well, as Shadow of day, War. Anyway. Shadow of War, I've got no, I got no interest in that one though. After playing the first game, I, I yeah. actually didn't like it that much. You know, everybody raved about it, and I didn't care for it. I mean, I love. Yeah. I wanted Rings, to like it, and I liked some of the I combat. Just, I just, but it just didn't. got fell flat eventually. You know, it was like, oh fuck, I got killed by the I same felt, guy three I, times. Now yeah. he's just owning my ass every time. You know, <laughs> I mean, that's how yeah. I felt. Yeah, go here, kill a captain, go... Like, I thought it was, like, more of a story I respected story-based it thing. for what it tried to do, but... You know? Yeah, yeah. it was... But, it was too hard, know, like, almost. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, I, it kind of lost on me. But anyway, Assassin's Creed, uh, back to the topic, yeah, I think it's going to be a great game. I think it will sell pretty well. Uh, hopefully it sells really well on the Xbox One X, because uh, it would be nice to see people get behind the best versions and, and show that, you know, like, Microsoft's back in the game, and... You know what I mean? And and, and the most importantly, yeah. it's encouraging to know what ha- will happen next year when devs have had a full six to eight months or ten months behind the actual dev kits and can actually start, like, really pushing the system. You know what I mean? Like, this is just the tip of the iceberg. So uh, get ready for Damn some pillars. really crazy-ass improvements next year, boys. Oh, dude. Yeah, they're dude. Gonna, 
I'm excited. I know, I've heard people say no, the code's already set, and it's it's going to look as good as it's going to look right now. And people, but I think that's just people trying to oversell it. I think it's I think games are always going to look better as the system gets out and push. I mean, look. Look at Call of Duty 2 on the 360, and then look at Halo 4. Oh, shit. Point, yeah, Halo 4 was point uh, proven. insane. Okay? Yeah. For, for what it too. is on the hardware it was, I mean, come on, dude. Yeah. Need I say mm-hmm. more? Good lord. Exactly. Just think about that. Think of how far some of those games got pushed way back then. Yeah. Look, you, look at, you look at Gears of War 3 compared they to did, the very yeah. first one. And you're like, oh, look at oh, that's four. a huge difference. With HDR, it looks like six in my mouth. Yeah. Oh, my god. Well, I think Noob's talking about even just on the old hardware. And yeah, just on 360. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Actually. That's what I mean. They really pushed what you could do with that. Yeah. That's crazy to think about with our next console coming. I mean, that's really crazy to think about. The potential. Okay, now, guys, let's transition to our final topic here. Which is Destiny 2, which is what we happen to be playing and having an insane strike Ooh, on right now. It uh, is crazy. I'm about to die. I got knocked off. Okay, Les, have you got it yet? Or you say you're going to get it sometime now, on PC? See, um, for some reason, like they that. thought it would be a great idea to release the PC version in October. So, I have to wait. Uh, I hate when uh, they But do I that. did play the beta briefly and I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. And I didn't get to play the multiplayer though. I was kind of upset. Like I don't know yeah, why they did a either. beta in the middle of the week, kind of. Uh, oh. But yeah, that's one thing yeah. I hate about. I like I, the beta. I gotta keep it real. Like uh, the multiplayer is better in some, in a lot of ways. The four v feel four feels good. feels good. That's not my issue. My issue is on the last game you could pick control. You could pick Team Deathmatch. You could pick yeah. Kill Confirm, which is called Supremacy. In this game, it's in two sections. It's high intensity, low intensity, which I love playing the low huh. intensity. I, I feel like I'm good for that, and I feel like I, it's still challenging. I'm not the high intensity I could be competitive in if I had friends that consistently played Crucible and could play with me, and I would love to do that and get the good rewards for it and that whatnot. Yeah. But uh, the thing is, the low intensity is so much fun, but... The, the thing is, you're going to play one of three game modes in that. You're going to play either Control, Team Deathmatch, or Kill Confirmed. And all those are fun. It's all good. Mm-hmm. But that's an issue I have with it. I, I, like, I, I kind of like being able to just play Control or just Team Deathmatch or just Supremacy. You know, and maybe there's a challenge to do Supremacy and, and win in it or whatever. You know, that kind of thing. Um... But that's that's the that's the one thing I have on the multiplayer. Um, other than that, I love the game, no doubt. Okay, Which now game was this uh, again? we're Shit. talking Destiny Two. So, oh, like we're both dead. Did you say play alive. the original one? Okay, I'll try. I have ten seconds if so you can stay alive. Shoot. Oh fuck. Just, uh, dude, that's. I was trying to guys. save you, and of course, I was right next to the friggin' liquid shit in the floor. That was hard. Do you have to start uh, all we gotta do it over? All over. Just, yeah. Yep, yeah, all the way over. Man. Fucking long respawns, man. Like, if you have any armors that you got that you haven't equipped yet? Yeah, let me uh, let me check my inventory. Okay, well, let me ask y'all. Do y'all think that this is Destiny 1.5, or do you think it's a legit sequel? Both. Uh I think <laughs> okay. I it's like a legit sequel um, because they completely improved the story. The, the characters mean more. The story alone feels like a true bungee game compared to uh, Destiny 1. It, like, Destiny 1 just felt like a rushed, like halfway done story with a good concept. Whereas this feels like the concept's a little bit more fleshed out. But yeah. with this concept, there's still a flaw, and that is... If you're a solo player, they pop this game up as, oh man, if you're a solo player, you can still play fun. And there are things that are in the world that are more fun as a solo player than Destiny 1. But, mm. once you're at that top lot level, there's a certain point that you can only get so far alone. And I understand they, they've hopped up guided games, and that's their answer to that. But guess what, man? 
the guilds or whatever that are walking through things are going to most of the time expect you to know hey what you want to do and I'd really just play with friends anyway to be honest me too uh, yeah. you know and if they're not going to do yeah. full fledged matchmaking then I'd rather them just you know uh, I'd rather be able to just play with friends uh, but that's not always an option yeah. man um but uh yeah, so that's the thing is I've worked so hard to get to where I'm at on my lot level. So I'm a friend who don't have enough time or didn't get to play it as much, you know, or at a certain lot level. And we haven't got to do the raid yet or nothing because it's not that I'm waiting yeah. on you, but there's only so many friends that I have that are actually willing to play all that with me. Kind of thing. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, man. So I'm just, uh, I just, I fell that's, off, that's boys. my issue. That's my issue with it. Um, I really want, to see uh, okay like Destiny 1 was so much fun but the thing I didn't like about it was I always had to wait for the next DLC for it to be fun again yeah there's a lot of fun that I've had like look how beautiful this map is look how beautiful you know I admire all that kind of thing but I do need to see and and there's a lot of really cool um, things to do with friends there's a lot of cool uh, events that I'm going to get into and I'm going to have fun with but they need to be just a little bit more compelling than Destiny. And in that regard, they're, they're kind of Destiny 4.5 on the events and stuff that keeps the game interesting mm-hmm. after you reach your max level and whatnot. But other than that, I do want the most powerful shit, and I want to kill gas and Crucible. That's my ultimate goal. Um, but to do that, I need to have raid friends, not fall friends. That's going to come with time. You know, that's a matter oh, yeah. of problem. But as far as the story, super impressed with it. It is a sequel it did better destiny one it is not destiny 1.5 as far as the story it is a full-fledged destiny 2 as far as the story and that's that's what i how i feel about it yeah Um, the campaign is way more compared multiplayer also feels faster feels better in a lot of ways as well but Mm. i do where i think it's destiny 1.5 is it just needs a little bit more to keep my interest solo wise Friend wise, I'm good. I don't even care if I get anything or not because I have so much fun on it. Yeah, See, that's it's where it's kind of conflicting. That's where it's like I think it's both. That's how I feel about it. Well, yeah. Uh, my my thoughts first. I try to keep this short, but uh, I I think it's Destiny 1.5. I mean, while I like the game and it has improved in a lot of areas, uh, I mean, story obviously it has a story, but those developers say yeah. it has so much story that it was like overwhelming like really like it took no time to get to level 20 and beat the last boss it was like really um but uh the graphic engine has not really gone through much other yeah you can see some difference the the, the, uh there's better lighting there's um the environments themselves look a little more like like alive they're just they're just better looking uh, that sort of thing but it's the same game same multiplayer same premise like like once you're basically through your campaign really you, the same thing that makes destiny popular is the same thing that i kind of despise it for it's kind of like it's just a grind fest to get the bigger better gun like you really don't do nothing else but that essentially and like to me that's going to be super helpful yeah so that's my thought it'll be fun the next uh, beautiful step, little thing a step forward this this is the destiny that the first game should have been uh, and then, yeah, yeah, but as a true sequel, maybe not. Maybe it will come. Um, I, I don't know. At least that's how I feel. I don't, and that's sh- not a grudge on the game that I hate it. I actually like it. I have fun playing it. And best of all, yeah. like you said, it's a great game of friends. 20 minutes, or you play it for four hours, you have a great time. And that's really, yeah. at the end of the day, that's all video games really need to be about, is having a great fucking time and and the play mechanics are amazing like the way this game handles it's smooth as butter uh you it know is, there's platformers yeah. out there that are not as tight as this game you know um yeah. so kudos yeah. that's that's where i'm gonna sit on it yes. Good game better effort but uh... awesome okay, well a lot of people have said sorry just one more point to that a lot of people have said Oh, <clears throat> it's the exact same enemies. You know, they're the exact same. Well, that's not true. Um, it's the exact same enemy types, the exact same story and lore. But, like, the servitors just used to float around and be thick, and you had to kill them. 
interesting at all. Now they give their teammates shields when they're around them, and you have to kill them first before you kill anybody else. They've added little tweaks. The vandals, they don't just walk towards you and shoot you and kind of strafe around. They do that sometimes, but now they crawl towards you. They do like they have tweaked a couple little things. I do think it's worthy of being called Destiny Two. I do think it's worthy of being called a sequel for a lot of reasons. Like Mooch has said, which is a, a, a guy that hey, does Chase, a lot of don't different start podcasts. another one, buddy. We'll close it out after this. Um, but no, he he said, you know, it's still Destiny. It's still what, if you like <clears throat> Destiny 1, you're going to love this game. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and that's the point he's making. Man, it's still going to have a lot of the same yeah. issues that probably a lot of y'all had, but you're still going to have fun with the game. You're still going to get it. Yeah. You're still going to have fun. But you know what? I, I, this... I don't regret the game. I loved it. But, I, you, I, I but do you know why it. this game has a two on it? Because they needed to reinvigorate the fan base. They could have easily said it was an expansion, but at the same time, there's a little too much content here to be classified as a straight up expansion, right? Yeah. And they yeah. needed to again reinvigorate the franchise. That's Nothing true. gets a franchise <laughs> than putting a new number on the fucking end sequel. of a game. You, yeah, you yes. Make a sequel. Because if they had just said it's an expansion, well, you know who would have bought the expansion? It would have been the like, you know, the the fifty thousand players fans. that were still playing it online. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But because saying That's it's a very number good two, point, they they got way more sales because they put a sequel behind it. It, it reinvigorated mm-hmm. the franchise. You're either bringing in a lot of new people who never played the first game, or you're bringing back a lot of returning veterans uh, yeah. to play the game. And you can tell, like, right? I mean, already in a yeah. in what just over a week on the market, this game. I mean, people have logged like days worth of playtime. It's it, mm-hmm. it's a, it's this game is a phenomenon whether you love it or hate it it's 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 it carved out a new niche of its own and it has yeah. a life of its own it has a mm-hmm. community that's like like the halo community used to be you know what i mean like mm-hmm. people are die hard on this that's true i'll bro. say i'll say like one thing that i'm looking forward to the most is to see if this is going to be like destiny one whereas they had a pretty decent little game then you got kind of bored with it then they brought out two DLCs that kind of barely added to it. Then they added one that completely rechanged the whole game. Then they added to that with the last Iron Lord, mm, you know, expansion. Yeah. I'm, I'm hoping with this game, they add a new enemy. They add a new thing. They start off faster than just Osiris. Like, more stuff yeah. to play. I hope they start off faster and bring the big guns at the very first and, and every expansion is a hard hitter yeah. like taking like taking king was a good ass expansion in the first one i don't care what anybody says and like i hope it's that magnitude that they bring because it doesn't need to be just a destiny one where you're just getting better better armor all the time it needs to be more story it needs to be more things that make me sink about five days of my life straight where i don't play anything else you know into it that's what I'm hoping for. I hope they really do something with the DLC with this one more. And that's the last point I want to make about Destiny. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing when Les gets to play it and uh, maybe Christian sometime. And I think we all need to try to get uh, Player Unknown Battlegrounds when it comes to Xbox, dude. That would be oh, so hard to play I definitely want to. Because I'm yeah. definitely going to pick it up again. Yeah, I want us all to play, like, do a podcast on that. Like, I think that would be so fun. Or do a podcast they, while we're playing it. Chase, totally you know down. when they said they're going to release it, or? They said it's going to be this year, because there wasn't a definite okay. release date. They didn't even know this year, but they're, they're finally actually coming out and saying it will be at the I end of I know they year, already I have uh, controller but. support for the PC version, so, like... <laughs> Yeah. So that's all I've heard about it at Game, at Gamescom. They they announced the developer announced that it will be indeed this year that they're going to have a, a release for it. But it's it's so it's going to be before 2018. That's the best we can hope for. But it's it's okay. getting there. We're getting to the end. I'm it. I'm ready. And then we'll have to do a. Uh, we've already discre- uh, talked about this, discussed this. We're going to have to have a right after Deadpool two podcast so we can. Mm-hmm. We'll have to watch oh, that yes. and talk about it because I think that would Deadpool be really fun. President. And uh, okay, so in closing, whether you're a first time listener or a bro that wanted Mo, thank you for tuning in with us tonight for your late night fix. Episode three was a blast. Les, where can people find you and see any work you share or watch your streams? 
Uh, you can catch my mixer, Enrage. I think it they made an underscore under it, so it's N underscore Rage. Um, okay. I sometimes stream on Twitch, which is just Enrage. Um, you can follow me at Enrage84 on Twitter. And I haven't set up an Instagram for my art, but I'm going to work on that. For next time. Okay, buddy. Yeah, and I'll try to include links for you and on our social media. And Noof, where can people find you at, brother? In your mom's oh, I'm bedroom. Pretty... <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the okay, when, I'm, when I'm not in my mother's bedroom, yeah, I'm usually found on the Xbox or PlayStation, guys. Noof, Nukem, Noof underscore Nukem on PSN. Uh, I'm a full-time member of the Console Corner Podcast. You can check that yeah. out on Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Great cast You'll of characters that. over there in that podcast. And uh, also, I normally, I guess I'm kind of a full-time member of Xbox Nation. Look forward to bringing it back this Wednesday since uh, Crap Gamer, unfortunately, was... Uh, um, you know, I uh, kind of behind the last couple of days due to the yeah. uh, Hurricane Irma. Hurricane, so we want to yeah. wish our best Thoughts to craps. I, I want to thank uh, Spider Man and uh, Jago and everybody else that came over to watch my stream here tonight as well, guys. Appreciate it. And I wasn't interacting yeah. with you personally because I was part of a podcast as opposed to. But I, I recognize you're there. Just wanted to shout out to those guys. And uh, thank you for coming by. And that's where you can catch me, guys. You can find my YouTube channel, Noof Nukem. Simple stuff. Everything's Noof Nukem. And uh, I want to thank you guys for having me on the first, uh, my yeah, first man. time being on your broke podcast. I had a lot of fun. I thought the topics were great. Uh, we were playing pretty well and moseying through some levels. Yeah, we were. Having a great time. And, uh, man, you can't do it any better. Podcast and playing an awesome game all in one shot. Oh, great man. people. My best, my Doesn't favorite. get any better. Thank you. Well, uh, we definitely hope that this is just your first time. And, we will gladly have you back with us anytime you want to join us, man. Um, so Hello? you guys can find me and the Bro Not Podcast on Twitter at Two Bears Blake. Hello. On Facebook, um, you can watch us live on Mixer at Two Bears as well. If you like audio, you can go to SoundCloud.com slash Bro Not Podcast. He's the most magnificent, the total antithesis of insufficient, the blessed, the glorious, splendid, transcendent, difficult to comprehend, independent of space and time, but presently present, suspending the heavens with speech. From coast to coast, he speaks peace to wind and seas, got heavenly hosts, easily posted on bended knees, controls the cosmos with the most authority, so he boasts in the most exalted King Christ supreme.